Hey Captain Hooter, how's it going my friend? This is Chef Kiko from Below Deck Mat 5 and this video it's a shout out for his new show Wake and Bake and I just have a look, it's pretty fun and pretty cool what he's doing with this amazing plant and I know already a couple benefits to use and consuming this plant like there's a lot of omega 3, 6 and 9, a lot of protein, it's amazing what these seeds can do it and also I think has an amazing flavor reminds me like almonds when I use in my in my cooking and I really hope you guys have fun watching him and all the best from Brazil and cheers Isa it's Captain Hooter Hello Dzień dobry Bom dia Dobre Utra Доброе утро. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We look young and Buenos dias. Hello. Everybody online looking good. Sawadi krab. Good night. Доброго ранку. Bon dia. Como ron. Habaria subuhi. Good morning world. <laughs> Dude, we have such a great show today. I can't even begin to tell you. This right here, that is Jessica Gonzalez, the Mommy Jane. She has probably the most entertaining and educational Instagram feed in the business. Dude, she is a legitimate cannabis influencer. She is one of the industry's true shooting stars, and I can't wait for you to meet her. So let's check out this interview and I'll be back in a few minutes. One. Hola, hola everyone, Captain Huda here. Coming to you once again, very high, very alive, slightly dazed, very amazed, and I am delighted today. I have one of my great friends. Oh, she is fantastic. She is an absolute superstar. She's an educator, an influencer, and not just an influencer, but somebody actually teaches people how to be an influencer. So serious, hardcore stuff. She's an event planner. She is an incredible, incredible writer, and I would say entertainer because she has one of the best Instagram feeds in the entire world. I'm talking about Jessica Gonzalez. I'm talking about the Mommy Jane. How are you, ma'am? Hello. Hello. Hi from California. Happy to see you, Captain. Oh, I miss home. I want to go home. We miss you too. <laughs> oh my God. Um, you know, I, I've told people about you and one of the funny things that, well, it's not one of the funny things, but one of the things that I think of is I had an opportunity. I met you at MJ Biz and I met you uh, walking around at some parties with uh, Lauren Mundell, who's the lady who created High Curious, which is one of the most fabulous apps. Yes. And what I, I didn't know anything about you or anything about your story. And if you would have told me your story after I had met you that night, I go, no, no, that, no, no, that, that doesn't look like someone like that. Um, can you just real quick for those of my, I have a whole group of people that might not have seen you before. Can you quickly give me the, the overview and then we'll jump into talking about some cool stuff. Yes. Hi, hi neighbors, old and new. Um, my story started actually, well, you know, obviously we all try cannabis at some point in our lives, but when do we really discover cannabis? So yes, I, I tried cannabis in my teens, but when I really discovered cannabis for my health and wellness was actually in my thirties. I was a little bit of a late bloomer on the, on the wellness side of Mary Jane and so grateful for the impact that it immediately made on me um, well into my adulthood. So I was an alcoholic. I was um, using various methods to cope with my depression, including food, alcohol, and pharmaceuticals, and to no avail, they didn't work. And um, I was desperate, obviously, for a solution. I had a mom friend who I was so grateful for because she reintroduced cannabis to me in the form of a vape pen, which was something in 2000 and 15, I'd never even heard of before. So um, we would, you know, share the vape every once in a while when we would hang out and I would get my fix then. And I noticed the days that I would partake with her 
I wouldn't drink as much, you know, and, and coming from an alcoholic who would drink during the day and, you know, by the pool with other mom friends, it was such a lifestyle change for me to all of a sudden realize like, you know what, I don't even need that wine tonight. I'm, I'm just still feeling pretty good from hanging out with my friend. And so one thing led to another, one hangover too many. And I decided that I was going to titrate myself off alcohol, titrate myself off the pharmaceuticals that were not working for me and improve my lifestyle through cannabinoid education. Because sometimes I would smoke and want to clean my entire house. And sometimes I would smoke and want to sleep on the couch. And I, I wanted to get down to the bottom of it. And so I went to Google. And as we know, in 2015, Google didn't really have too much information on cannabinoid education back then. And so I took what I could with what I had already available to me. And I discovered that THCV was an appetite suppressing yet energetic cannabinoid that would be really great for moms, I figured. So I went through Leafly and I checked out every product in the Orange County area so that I could find out which would be most beneficial for me. If it said appetite increasing, I wouldn't even go near it. No matter how uh, you know praised it was, I wouldn't even go near because I knew that wasn't going to serve me. And so through trial and error, I found the products that worked and eventually lost a hundred pounds using cannabinoid medicine, changing my lifestyle and actually getting into a better lifestyle and better relationship with food, with alcohol, with myself, with my family. It was like this ripple effect of, of goodness. And so once I realized how beneficial cannabis was for myself and for my girlfriend, who was obviously also using it for her mental health and wellness, I thought, okay, I'm gonna see if there's other advocates out there so I can see other mom information. And when I took to Instagram and it was, a little dry it was a little you know dry desert out there i thought well moms still need to know about this and so i started to talk about it on my personal page and it was crickets my family and friends did not want me to talk about it so i meditated the mommy jane came up in a meditation i quickly went to instagram and made the count and the rest is history there's no way i could have anticipated what was going to happen from that day on and wow, look at what's happened. I mean, it's ridiculous. And, and you know, you have opened the doors and taken the loads off of a lot of the backs, guilt off of a lot of mothers. And I'm going to tell you an interesting story that you don't know about me. Um, when I was conceived, I'm going way back and telling you exactly how old I am. So I was born in November of 1961. So this is a this is a while ago, right? My mother, my father made it a point to tell me till his dying day that if there was such thing as being, you know, like there's crack babies, he said if there's such thing as being a weed baby, you would have been a weed baby because your mom smoked weed every single day of her pregnancy. She didn't have uh, pills, didn't take pills, she wasn't drinking, so she wanted to be healthy for you. And uh, she smoked every single day. And uh, so for me, now I have been healthy. I've lived a healthy life. He had heart attacks in his 50s. Um, and I'm as healthy as I can be. Thank goodness. Good knock on things. Praise Allah. Everybody else. Ja Rastafari. How many do I cover here? Um, <laughs> I covered the rest. Don't worry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the rest. Of it. I appreciate it. But, you know, interesting. That, you know, she lived with a tremendous amount of guilt from that time period, right? And I now, can't imagine. Even, all the, even all the way now, a lot of moms were having a lot of time with this. And that's one of the wonderful things that you've been doing. Um, your uh, Instagram feed, to me, is one of the, I mean, talk about a machine. You, I mean, I love all of your stuff and the quality of what you post and the effort that goes into them are just... <laughs> Ah, that's such a praise coming from you. Thank you so much. You know, we're all watching from a distance and, you know, a lot of us flip and we zip and we do all that. And then, you know, I look at 10 zillion different things a day, but at the end of the day, I remember the top 10, you know, I know, I know, I know who's really working and who's really thinking and who's really caring. And, you know, I, to me, I think that's one of the coolest things um, about you and the fact that you're sharing so much. Uh, can you tell us about some of it? Because I know you've got some new projects that are coming up where we're going to get to see a little bit more of you, um, yes. especially in education format. Yes, I'm very excited. Actually, you know, um, uh, Wednesday, 
August 10th. I'm, I'm, I don't know when this is going to go to publication, so excuse me, but you, we'll, you'll be able to find this afterwards at some point. But please know that um, uh, I, I'm actually going to be doing a big panel with marketing and advertising in the cannabis industry with Oaksterdam and Women Employed in Cannabis, which is probably one of the most significant talks I, I will get to have in my in my career, you know, being able to be a voice for something that is so challenging at times for us, you know, for everybody else in other industries, social media advertising and marketing is is butter. But for us, it becomes like tar. It's so hard to move. It's so hard to navigate through. And and even I struggle even with all of my knowledge and with all of my experience and all my ups and downs with Instagram. I still struggle, but I'm still the voice of of the industry along with the other women that I'll be speaking with. So that's huge for me to be finally recognized in, in, in such a big way. It's such an honor to hear from you today that you love my content and it's an honor to speak about my content in front of the masses. I don't wanna gatekeep information. And so that's why I am doing talks like Women Employed in Cannabis and Oaksterdam and then how I recently partnered with Tokativity to create a guide on how to grow your personal brand on Instagram. It's very important to do this consciously it's always been my my uh, intention. That's how I got started. If you have been following me for a long time, you know I wrote, I was a journalist for uh, Direct Cannabis Network and I had a column called The Conscious Cannabis Cannapreneur. So it was always my intention to, to, to do this consciously because yes, everybody wants to be in this industry, but who is gonna be making the biggest impact while they're in here? And it had I, I had to be part of that impact and I wanted to teach others how to be a part of that impact as well. And whether we want to agree or not, cannabis influencing and advocacy and marketing is going to be part of the future on social media. And we have to do it in a mindful, tactful, informative way so that mm. other people can take this industry seriously. The people that come across our pages are going to be people from all sorts, especially with Reels. With Reels, you get exposed to such a diverse audience. And when you do that, you are being lent a very important baton to pass on to people and how you package that baton matters and how you spread that information matters. And so that's why Tokativity and I came together to create a guide that is broken up into all sorts of stages and phases from, from finding your name and your logo to uh, how you deal with, you know, online bullying and how you approach uh, brands or how do you approach influencers mindfully? Because I didn't want it to just be an, an influencer uh, guide. I wanted this to be a guide for brands as well. How can we all cohesively work together in a mindful way so that we can break the stigma through education online? I had a conversation with a, a social media master once who told me, and he mentioned this quote. He said, it, it's an old Japanese quote. He said, uh, a fool speaks when he wants to say something. A wise man speaks when he has something to say. And you know, for me, that has been kind of an underlying philosophy of how I do my social media. I can, I, I will put things out, but I'm going to take my time about what I'm putting out. And I have thought about what I'm putting out because it's not, I, I have, I like to think things through in order to be able to do this. You, however, have an incredible natural gift where you can flow. And that is a true gift. And it's so much fun watching you. Even today, you did, before you came on today, you put on a, a, a quick reel. Perfect, see? And that's a true gift. And, and at the same time, if you can teach other people how to go about this and how to get that mindset. Because people are going to do it anyway. So we got to let them, we got to show them a, a more mindful way to do this so we can all be successful. I want everyone to come into this industry and be successful as long as they're doing it with intention. And how do we do that? We work together. So there it is. And you have to stand out. You have to find a way to stand out. There are a billion people or so that are out here doing this. It's not like you're you're up against just this group of people. There's a billion people out here or more, however many that are on, on just on social. It's crazy. Um, you know, we, we started, a, a, after I met you in, in Las Vegas, Shortly thereafter, I watched you do a video with Dr. Mary Clifton. Can you, I, I mean, I don't want to, for other people, but can you, how did you get in, in link up with her? You know, it's always a blessing the people that come into my life because I feel like when we set that vibration and that attention out there, then the right people will be attracted. And for me, and I feel like where my family and friends are, 
having people like doctors and nurses and other, you know, uh, really highly educated individuals backing this industry, backing this plant is going to be a huge key for a lot of the naysayers out there. It's a big, like I said, my family, my audience on, on, a, on a certain level, I know what they need. And so having someone as not only fun uh, as Dr. Mary is, but educational, you know, how can we make education fun? How do we keep it so that doctors aren't always seen as a stiff in a white coat? They're not all like that. It's, it's not a one size fits all, just like stoners are not a one size fits all. So I wanted to share, share well, obviously a lot of people do know about Dr. Mary already, but for those that didn't, I wanted to show a, a light in the industry that there are doctors that not only advocate for this plant, but create amazing uh, courses to educate as well and empower and, and, and find the plant consciously and uh, also do it in a more fun way, in a, in a much more fun and informative way than we've been doing it in the past you know this isn't dare this is your a doctor who enjoys cannabis who understands how the endocannabinoid system works and she's out there creating products that are also fun too so it's really like i said about intention i'm very lucky i got to link up with her and i'm very grateful for the cannabinoid education course that she's provided so that we can all stay empowered in our education as well and help others within the industry that want to take that extra step to be um educated in cannabinoids She's fantastic. You know, she was like in, uh, one of my first guests on the show here. And, uh, you know, her cannabinoid protocol is, I think, one of the, the most in-depth uh, 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 courses of that nature. And I, I zipped right through it. I did from beginning you to did. as soon as I got it. I was not messing around, man. I, I was so excited to get a hold of that. And it was gripping. And it was, it was for me, uh, uh, done in such a way where I could get right through it. And her videos are spectacular. Uh, yeah. Really love them. And her, now her Instagram is also quite hilarious. And her tick, no, it's her TikTok. She's crushing her TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> Dude, Dr. Mary on TikTok is like, wait, that's Dr. Mary? She's go, like, Mary, Dude. go. <laughs> I always tell her there's something about Mary because there really is. She is, she is such the light that we needed in this industry and so much fun. And it's such an honor to know her and have someone of her, uh, you know, prowess just navigate this industry with us because yeah. I don't know where I'd be without her. I feel, feel so much better having her in my life. And I hope others that get her in their lives also feel the same way too. Absolutely. And I'll make sure to put another post up here for her so that everybody knows where, where she is. You know, I, I saw something else the other day and um, I, I was going to, because I, I ran across uh, while I was on Amazon, I saw you have an Amazon influencer page. Yes. I was one of the I, first out there. I, that in, I, I applied thinking, I'm just going to apply because this is, I don't remember how I found out about it. I don't know if it was suggested to me or what. But I just threw my hat in the barrel. And this is before Instagram was really mean to us influencers and advocates. They were actually a little bit more lenient on our posts. So <laughs> it, I didn't have the insecurities that I do now whenever I put something out on on online, you know, like, oh, I'm going to get knocked for this because I'm into cannabis. But I went ahead and I put my hat out there. And sure enough, I, they got back to me. And when they announced everybody, I was one of those first in the, in the first rush of people that had a page. And, you know, I really wish I... I, I, my intention is to spend more time on it because it really is a, a great way for people that are new to cannabis to browse a virtual shop of, of things that I've tried and, and things I've seen used in, in other various situations that, I've seen, that have been beneficial to others. And a great way for me to showcase some of my favorite brands as well that are also on Amazon, which is really cool. Yeah. Well, you know, I was going to, I, I want to ask you more about some of these brands. I was going to recommend a brand for you because one yes. of my guests who was on my show uh, here a couple of weeks ago was uh, Russ Hudson. And Russ Hudson, uh, who used to be the guy to know in Spain and uh, to be able to get you into basically any of the private clubs in Spain, recently wrote his masterpiece called The Big Book of Terps. And it's a magnificent book, but that's not the book that I wanna recommend to you. Oh. He also just came out with this new book, called, and it's a children's book, and it's called What's That Weed? And it's a children's book that you could give to a child to uh, talk about cannabis to your child through a small... How cool is that? Love it. Love the name. This is so cool. Good job, Russ. 
Thank you, Russ. What's that? What's that yeah. read? I loved it. No, but you're being an influencer um, uh, means that you are probably on the look, on the scour all the time for the coolest, newest stuff. And, and uh, you know, I know from following you for a while that that's, you know, you're like a super shopper. You're out there finding the very best, coolest stuff all the time. So can you tell all of our viewers right now what's really cool and stuff? Grab your pens, kids. What's really cool that we should be looking at or looking for that you have seen lately or that okay. you're recommending? So I just got back from Champs a couple of weeks ago and holy moly, that is the place for those of you that are into the tech, into like glass, all like the latest glass, all the latest ways to vape, if you can uh, afford and, and take the time out to do so, I highly recommend getting yourself out to, not necessarily the Las Vegas one, this, this, this trade store actually travels throughout the country, but if it comes to a, a city near you, even just one day is worth, worth the trip. It's like the candy shop for, for all of us uh, connoisseurs, you know what I mean? And it's like, I would say mostly a lot of glass, but there's also um, recently, obviously mushrooms are coming in now and a lot more, uh, you know, other herbal remedies are coming in. So not a lot of CBD and stuff. They don't really, that's not the focus. The focus is more tech and the focus is more glass. And so I had the privilege of going to Wackett's, it's W-A-K-I-T, um, Wackett's headquarters. Oh, and yes. They, yes, they gifted me two of their new products. One of them you might've seen if you follow Koala Puffs, it's the one where you smash, 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 and it grinds your weed, not with a razor, but with ball and chain ball yes, and chain yes. grinding it's crazy and it leaves yeah. the stem so those of you that haven't seen this i'm getting so excited for you but those of you that have seen this you <laughs> you know and then the second product they just recently came out with was a self-filling joint like it grinds it it fills it all for you it's just like the easy it's, i call it the lazy mama's way to, to roll joint so so <laughs> incredible so those two things i just saw in person for the first time i've seen them obviously online um, another thing that I saw at, uh, this is not tech, but this is obviously, um, new plant plant. I don't want to say the word to get in trouble, but plant medicine, I don't know what else to call it, but alternative <laughs> ways to medicate. Um, but they've recently, uh, formulated mushroom gummies mixed with cannabinoids, minor cannabinoids to create the effect of microdosing psilocybin. So it's not psilocybin. Mm -hmm. It's not psychedelic, psychedelic. It's actually other mushrooms plus cannabinoids to mimic the effect of uh, like right when you're about to like peak but you're not there yet i know captain hooter i know, I know. oh my god okay yes isn't, yes isn't okay did you get any too? of those yet did you get any i didn't get yet? the mushrooms no 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 you know who got some is doreen from my bud vase she got like three bags i should have probably snagged one from her oh. <laughs> i know but okay. you know what i am gonna get some that's really really high on the list for me because I like that effect. I'm a microdoser myself and I'll get into that later, but mm -hmm. I love the idea of, of, of a legal way to kind of like feel extra kind of trippy, just a little yeah. trippy on those days that you want to feel a little trippy. And can you imagine mushrooms and cannabinoids coming together synergistically oh, in such a beautiful mm -hmm. way? In the right format, absolutely. That's, you know, by the way, I knew we were gonna be chatting a little bit about this. So, you know, I, I went from my Vincent Gordon. I this loved is it, like I noticed it right away. Favorite trippy, trippy shirt. He is one of the, my most favorite, favorite artists for this kind of uh, trippy artwork. But, you know, I, I one of the things that I started to see when I was in Jamaica recently was uh, people that were using uh, shroom shine. And that was the way they were doing their microdosing. So they would take some golden teacher, chop it up, put it inside a, one, a little uh, bottle of uh, overproof white rum, and then you could microdose, right? The, 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 the mushrooms that way, which is a completely different way that here in Europe, that does nothing like this exists. It's completely illegal. Um, in Amsterdam, there's a famous story about a girl who, uh, who jumped out of a window and then that basically killed the magic mushroom uh, industry. Now you have to buy uh, kits and grow your own and oh. uh, start producing. So when you find it, it's usually from a friend or someone else, uh, you know, of course you can still find things on the street, but it's, uh, it's, it's, we don't have the options that you have. Have you seen, can you tell me about some of the, the different products, especially the, with the mushrooms that might've come out recently or uh, the that you're a big fan oh, of? 
Well, the mushrooms that I can talk about that have come out. I mean, I, I can tell you that my source also, who I shared a lot though, I share my other source on, on Instagram often, but the legal mushrooms that I can talk about, I'm actually so impressed. And, and, and in, in the same vein, almost of what you are getting at here, but she's doing it obviously in a, in a non-psychedelic way, but society plant, uh, high society mama, she has society plant and she's created these alcohol uh, tinctures, alcohol-based tinctures that have not only cannabinoid medicine, but mushroom medicine also and mm -hmm. various effects. So there's thrive and chill. And so sometimes with the thrive one, I got to be careful. Cause it's like, if I have that and coffee, it's like too, too uppity for me, very similar to cannabis strains. So those of you that have never really played around in, into the mushroom medicine yet, um, it, you, your strains, the strains do matter and they affect everybody so differently. And for some people, it might be an upper for some others. They might feel be a downer. You never know what you're going to get, but it's important to obviously always, you know, microdose, start slow, go low and, and increase and obviously trust your source, know your source or be the source, you know, but I really loved um, float float was the gummies that I saw um, at champs. And that was the one I was just telling you about recently with the, the mimicking of the psychedelia and they've been making edibles for over 20 years. They're actually the creators of chronic edibles. If you guys know about chronic edibles, they're, they, they're, they're old school. So they're, this is just their next adventure. And then secondly, um, the society's plant is the tincture that I've been really enjoying with the mushrooms. And then I have my own source who makes me, um, she's been doing this for a long time and, and was the personal chef of the Dalai Lama back in the seventies. So her oh. medicine's really good and really fun and very tasty because she knows what tastes good. So her gummies yeah. taste like blackberry and her gummies are lemon and her teas have blue oh. lotus and uh, other, other herbs in there to to give you like a full a full healing effect so mm -hmm. really amazing i'm really blessed you know you had a you did an article uh, uh not too long ago or a while ago back where you talked about your stash kit and yes. uh, you know i have i have my own stash kit now it's been a little time it, how much is that kit evolved or can you tell <sighs> us what, what's in your stash kit today <laughs> i love that you know um i love sharon and, and her series on high times what's in your stash i think that's one of the most important, important articles that we can read to get to know how people use cannabis, really. Cause it's, you'll see, if you look at every article, every person is so different. And it's so funny that you mentioned that because as I've changed my, even just this summer, I pulled back on my combustion and I was just yeah. re reflecting on my, I was thinking, oh God, I should reach out to Sharon to do a follow-up piece because my, my sash has changed so much because I've gotten older. My tolerance has changed. My needs have changed. My ailments have changed, you know? So over the years, the products I'm going to seek are going to change. But then the, obviously the cool thing is, as I've noticed, there are some brands that I still love and enjoy and trust. And that's so rad too, is looking back and like, oh my God, I still use uh, Phoenix and I still love Stash Logics and you know, all those brands that are forever going to be my Coca-Cola or my Cheerios, you know? So yeah. It's really cool that you mentioned Absolutely. that because yes, it's, it changes monthly. My stash changes monthly. <laughs> well, I was going to say, cause it, you had a very, it was very specific. And, and I mean, you, I, I remember you kicked it off with 1500 milligrams of CBD. Uh, of CBD. Um, now a CBD is, you know, uh, opinions are all over the place, but you you were talking about CBD and then you were, in doing your own kind of infusion there, weren't you? Or you're creating your own kind of yeah. entourage effect. Is yes, I was. <laughs> yes, I was. Well, because we didn't know then. And this was obviously like two years into what, I mean, every every month we're learning something different. I just read uh, last night that they've just found out that people that consume cannabis um, have a 50, 50, 55% ch less chance of, of getting this certain cancerous gene or cancerous, uh, I don't know, something that's in our body that, that creates a very common cancer so for us mm -hmm. that's amazing for us to realize mm -hmm. that you know yes we get those researches sometimes and it's not so favorable for us the things that they find out but the ones that are favorable they outweigh those insignificant problems so much more than that list of things that i got when i folded out my zoloft you know what i mean and i'm not knocking people that have to be on the, the pharmaceuticals but when i when i'm given my pharmaceuticals and i have to spend 45 minutes reading the side effects then I'm going to have a little bit of questions and concerns in my head. That's, that's just me. And I'll, I'll take those random Harvard uh, studies every once in a while that say, oh, if you 
if you smoke cannabis, then this is likely to happen. Or your, your memory is not as great in your seventies. Well, shit, you know what? My memory is already not great because I have mom brain all the time. So you know what? Bring it on. I'll take my cannabinoids any day. I saw one of your uh, recordings, your videos, uh, you were on a panel and I think it was in California and uh, you were talking about uh, birth defects. And, uh, you know, if we were going to put something side by side, uh, this is the, you know, here's where I'd rather be. <laughs> I'd rather yeah. be on the other side. I'll be, I'll be a weed baby. Thank you. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and I'll allow others to make that choice as well, because Moms know best. Those of you that are listening, your mom, your parent, no shame in your cannabis game, as I always say. You know best, and it's better than the alternatives out there. Trust me. I've been there. I've done that. You don't want to go there. I absolutely agree with you, though, that I think the, the whole microdosing of, of different types of psychedelics as, as time goes on and as more research is done uh, are really going to be one of the path forwards for a, a of so many different people in order to make lifestyle so much better. And it, we've all been kind of, I feel like we've all been kind of putting our own kits together, right? In, in different ways. I mentioned to you, you know, I have a smoking kit where I have uh, sneakotrokes and I have them that start from a uh, narrow leaf to broad leaf. So that my last one that I pull out at the end of the day is my sleeping uh, 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 weed. So it's, it's, it's your kit. <laughs> You're onto something with that, Captain. <laughs> yeah, well, somebody should, they could sell that. That probably could they be. Should. They should. I hope they do. It. Yeah, preloaded and everything. Yeah. Do you think that, um, how long do you think it'll be before the community at large will accept, uh, you know, cannabis right now? You already have got through that barrier, mm -hmm. right? For the most part. How long do you think it'll be before? You know, it'll be commonplace to to see moms and dads getting together in the front and say, yeah, Martha's been tripping for the last week and she's doing pretty well. And we just got to run the microdose of DMT and holy crap, are the kids happy? They're doing the, they're having the best time. They went on a hiking adventure last week. <laughs> How long I, do you think I that's have a five-year plan, Captain Hooter. I have a five-year plan. And I'm hoping, you know, a lot can change. We'll have a new presidency and it'll be new, hopefully new people that are younger in our politics, you know, at mm. that point so that we can make these significant changes and these different mindset shifts. And I will continue to speak at state fairs and I will continue to go state to state to share my story, to educate others, to normalize this plant because it really is a super food. It's more than just a plant. And people say it's just a plant. I, I, it's not even that anymore. It's, it's a superfood. It, it's, it's amazing. And the more we give it a chance in, in any form, whether it's raw cannabis or, or you know, if you're smoking 10 spliffs a day, as long as you're getting your cannabinoids, I feel like that's the most important part and the most important thing. So find it. Find a way that you can enjoy it and, and go for it. Dude, you rock. So here's the thing. Um, I have a feeling that you're going to have to come back on the show over and over again, because there's a bunch of different things and topics that have come up already since I started here, where I would have loved to have had you in that conversation. So if it's okay with you, I'd like to keep you on the, on, on the, uh, reserve oh. list right here for, for when these, these, uh, these kind of scenarios come on. Cause I think you're brilliant. And I think, you know, exactly you are the future of, of where we're going in this industry. And I think you're gonna be a huge superstar. Thank you. We are, Captain, we are. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me. We'll see you again soon. Oh, hey, what's happening, everybody? Welcome back. What did I tell you? Isn't she amazing? Dude, all that talk about mushrooms got me hungry. I had to make a move in here into the mushroom room. Anyway, dude. She's fantastic. Make sure you follow her, The Mommy Jane, on Instagram, on Facebook, on TikTok, on everything. She's fantastic, and you will not regret following her. I will see you guys on Saturday with a brand new Wake and Bake with Captain Hooter. In the meantime, have a great week, everyone. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>
It's Captain Hooter. Far out, man.